It's a lovely day in August 2012. It's a great day to be here with my Hawaiian shirt and several friends. Okay, here we are on the Place du Mola. This is one of the gates of the city because the lake used to come up right here so that barges could come and unload food, park right there at Kayak and then unload the food and it would be sold here in the city marketplace. There are three squares in a row here. This one was for food. The other one they unloaded uh, animals at to be with you. And the other one was coal and charcoal. So it, this was the the place where the action was in the city. There are a couple of cool things about it in modern times. One is these uh, these obstacles to uh, block cars from coming in. The delivery trucks have remote control, so they push a button and that thing goes into the ne into the ground and they can drive in. So they're issued those. The other is when they repaved the square, they put in paving blocks that say "Welcome, hello." God loves you. Actually, no, they don't say that. <laughs> but they say that in many different languages and in many different scripts, Arabic, Chinese, Korean. And they're lighted up at night. So this is the kind of the welcoming place for the city. And they want all the tourists to feel at home and, and go around to try to find their own language. We have one of the original gates of the city here. <clears throat> it is a medieval gate, but under the influence of Romanticism in the 19th century, they actually redid the outside to make it look older. That's not how it originally looked, but it's their idea of what old should look like in the 19th century. You can see this modern sculpture that says Geneva City of Refuge. And here again we have this, the spirit of the city, the lady with the shield with the arms of Geneva on it, and she is welcoming in a refugee. What we're going to talk about this morning is that Geneva is a place of teaching of the nations. And Lenin came here as a refugee. This was a center for Russian refugees. There were five Russian printing houses in the early 20th century. He came to, to the university begun by Calvin and his team to study and write and publish his stuff and to prepare his revolution. He ended up, his teachings ended up instructing 80% of the population of the world until 1989. If you're going to do that, it takes spiritual power. It's not just intellectual, it's not just political, it's a spiritual dynamic. He picked up that anointing here in Geneva, that's why he was sent here. The Place du Mola is important to the Reformation. Uh, the Reformation was first preached by William Farrell, a red-headed, choleric, French apostolic evangelist, trained in uh, Augustinian theology, in Paris, the same faculty where Calvin was trained, the same theology that, that Luther had also. But then the, Ref the Reformation broke out in Paris, and he was the one who came here to Switzerland to preach the gospel since he couldn't in France. So he had a method, his whole strategy was to do outrageous things and get everyone arguing about the gospel, and talking about it and thinking about it. For example, he saw a procession of a priest with relics down by the lake. They were having a procession with these relics of the saints. So he started yelling heresy and went down and pushed the priest and the, her and the relics into the lake, into the river. So he would do things like that all the time um, to provoke the discussion. So he started out preaching up by the cathedral, actually, and the canons of the cathedral chased him out of town down the street that we're going to walk up in a minute. Um, but one of his teammates, another Frenchman named Homo, stayed behind. There were businessmen in the city who heard about the Reformation in Germany, and they had decided this is the way that their city should go. But they needed a, a preacher for it. They didn't really know that much about it. So they hired Homo, who was a teacher by training, to be the teacher in the town's one school, which was just around the corner here from Place du Mola. So, as we mentioned in the Last night, people were so excited that they could finally read the Bible, read this book which had been forbidden, and read it in their own language, that the adults came to learn how to read the Bible. That got Fromont so excited that he came here to the market 
<clears throat> told people, jumped up on one of the tables in the market, not these tables here, <laughs> and he started preaching the gospel. And the authorities came around, and when he said this, they arrested him. We must reform the church in order to reform the nation. That's when they arrested him and take him out of town. But a year later, uh, Farrell was back, and the Genevans voted unanimously to the Okay, let's go up to the old city. Okay, we've just come up from the Place du Mola, and we're on the Rue de la Madeleine. It's called that because we're just down the street from the Temple de la Madeleine, um, which was uh, pre-Reformation was a convent of the Order of the Madeleines. And it was outside the city walls, because here we're standing at the foot of the city walls. And we're about to walk up the hill past a very ugly sculpture into the old city. Like many cities, Neon, Lausanne, and others, the city itself was on a hill, but there was a fortified tower down by the lake to resist invasion. So there were fortifications down at the lake, and, and goods, of course, would come into the city that way. But between the lake and the city, there were just gardens and orchards. It was unoccupied until it was slowly built up over the later centuries. So that's what, that was what happened here in Geneva. But the, the Temple de la Madeleine is one of the key places for us in our summer outreach in 1980, which I've already talked about. They gave us the keys to the, to the church and we would have big meetings every afternoon in the shopping district and every evening in the English gardens. And we would invite people to our evangelistic meeting on Sunday night, and we'd preach the gospel and we'd see people saved every time. So it's a, it's a great memory for me. I got to preach one of those Sunday nights. We really saw the Lord working in Geneva and <clears throat> really saw quite a few converts by the end of the summer. Unfortunately, most of them weren't actual Genevans, although some of the young people were. But the Lord did work when we got our, we realized how serious our intercession had to be. We redoubled our efforts in intercession and the, we did see the Lord at work in the city. Okay, let's go up the hill now. Okay, here we are, uh, as you can see, on Jean Calvin Street. This is because his house was here on this street. We're going to go down there in a minute. But um, we stop here also because. Up there is the, with this black building is the oldest remaining house in the city. It's, I believe, 15th century. It's actually two big houses that were put together by a wealthy family. And it now houses the city museum. Very good museum, which like all the museums of Geneva, are free. So, Farrell's strategy was to find a leader for each city that accepted the Reformation. He was the leader in Neuchâtel. <clears throat> Pierre Viré, the Vaudois, the only non-French member of this apostolic team, he was the leader in Lausanne. But they needed a leader for Geneva. They didn't have anyone. And Farrell was here with Viré in the city just a few months after they had accepted to be Protestants. And they heard that Calvin was in town. Someone told him, Jean Calvin, who's just written the Institutes of Religion, is in a, staying in an inn down by the lake with his sister. So, many people believe that Calvin's Institutes of Religion is still the best statement of Protestant theology ever written. But Calvin was not a theologian in the sense that we use the term today. He didn't set out to write a systematic theology to write a systematic theology. What he wrote with that first edition especially was a defense of the faith of his friends. And he dedicated that first edition, which was the only edition written in Latin, he dedicated it to the King of France. And in the dedication, he voiced his hope that the King of France would realize that the Protestants of France were good citizens. They were not heretics, as they were being called by the, by the French government and the French church. They were real Christians trying to follow the New Testament to the best of their ability. Because when the German princes protested to the king of France about killing so many Protestants, the answer they were given was, well, they're not Christians, these people. They're heretics. They don't believe anything um, about Christianity. So that's why we're killing them. 
So there had been nothing written down about what they actually believed until the Institutes, Institutes of Religion. So that's what Calvin did. He wrote it down. This is what we believe. This is what the Bible teaches, and this is what we believe. It was a fantastic work. So Farrell and Vire went down to recruit Calvin, and they said, we need you to stay here in the city and be the leader and rebuild Geneva. So Calvin knew the city was poor, the walls were down, the family structure was non-existent. As I mentioned last night, there was this huge percentage of taverns at, related to the population, a bigger percentage than any city in Europe. It was called the smelliest city in Europe. The leadership had left, they had kicked the bishop out because he was linked with the House of Savoy. So after the Duke of Savoy tried to occupy the city, they told the bishop, you're out of here. So when he left, all the nobles left, because they were part of the House of Savoy, and most of the priests left as well. So the leadership, the political and spiritual leadership had left, and there were, there were vacuums in every area. This was a, a city-state that wanted to change, that knew it had to change, and they were looking for a new way to live. But Calvin knew the problems of Geneva, and he said, listen, my health is fragile, and I'm going to continue my studies up in Basel. <clears throat> and Farrell stood up and pointed his long, bony evangelist finger at Calvin and said, may God curse you in your studies if you do not join us here in the work which he has appointed you to do. So the fear of God, or maybe the fear of Farrell, some kind of fear came down on Calvin, and he recognized that was the call of God on his life. And he wrote about that to the end of his life. And he stayed. He stayed in Geneva and began the work of the Reformation.